Hello, welcome to the inside of a Ferrari 812 GTS, the first front-engined V12 Ferrari Spider in 50 years, they say. Not strictly accurately true, there have been four specials in the interim. This is the first series production, soft top, actually hard top, V12 GT car from Ferrari for quite a few decades. You join me with the roof up. This car weighs 75 kilograms more than the standard 812 Superfast on account of this thing over my head. And it can go down at speeds up to 28 miles an hour. Well, let's find out. That's 27 miles an hour. And it goes down in, I think, around 14 seconds. Now, it's the end of October. And what with one thing and another, we're testing this car in the UK rather than somewhere warmer and sunnier. So I'll just do this very briefly. It's not too much wind buffeting. There's a little window back there which you can drop uh, or have up, whether you've got the roof up or down, which allows a bit more exhaust noise through into the cabin. And there are apparently some L-shaped things up here which deflect wind over the top so that my luxurious barnet doesn't get too tousled by the wind ahead. I'll go back and put the roof back up. Roof closing. The nice thing about modern roofs is that you can do them at speed on a quiet road or in town. If somebody looks like they're about to throw a can of whatever inside the cabin, you can put the roof up without annoying following traffic. And there's enough soundproofing in this cockpit, says Ferrari, that with the roof up, two people can have, and if only I had a friend, two people could have uh, a normal conversation, even at sort of higher speeds. So there, in a nutshell, you have an essence of what the 812 GTS is meant to be. It's an 812 Superfast Coupe with added air, and which is no less, marginally less, super fast, on account of it being ever so slightly heavier. It's slightly less accelerative, but it has pretty much the same top speed, 200 plus miles an hour, as the standard 812. And so, in more detail, what is it? Well, the 812 is the V12, six and a half litre, naturally aspirated, front-engined GT car from Ferrari, but it's a kind of sports GT car. It's not like uh, the FF or the GTC Lusso or whatever it became. It is a much more hardcore sort of super GT car, if you like. So that engine drives through a seven-speed twin-clutch flappy paddle gearbox with an automatic mode, and it drives the rear wheels only. And hooking all of those things together are Ferrari's various traction control, stability control, side slip control, electronic control differential system with adaptive dampers and the little Manatino dial that they talk about from which you can put anywhere through from race all the way through to absolutely everything off you're on your own sun and which on the road most of the time you'd leave in sport and race. The dampers get two options. You can have them in normal or you can push one simple button which puts them into bumpy road setting in which they get a tiny bit softer which actually is more useful most of the time in the UK than the other setting. So unlike in some sports cars there are not vast differences between uh, different suspension setups and also the steering weight remains the same all the time which is great. Ferrari has just set it up in the way it likes. I mean, some drivers find it a little bit light and a little bit uh, a little bit darty but I'll come back to that in a minute. But at least it's gone, no, this is what we like, this is what we think is right. That's fine, but no. The engine itself is something of a work of art. I think we will cut away for some technical details. The 812's engine is a 6.5 litre naturally aspirated V12 whose 800 PS, that's 789 brake horsepower, gives it a specific output of 121 brake per litre, more even than the 117 brake horsepower per litre that a Lamborghini Aventador SVJ puts out. It has to rev to 8,500 RPM to deliver its peak, and while peak torque of 530 foot-pounds isn't developed until 7,000 RPM, some 80% of that is offered at half the speed, 3,500 RPM. So this is a more flexible engine than you might think. In short, it's got loads of oomph all the time. 
but what you effectively need to know is that for a big V12, now anything with six cylinders in a line, and this has two backs of them, is a very smooth engine, and that helps them rev quite highly because you don't get imbalances when it does it. But even so, this is an enormous engine to be revving to 8,900 RPM. There are no turbos, there is no supercharger, there is no electrical assistance, it just generates 790 brake horsepower. The 800 brake, the 800 PS that gives it the 8 in its name, at more than 8,000 RPM. That's absurd, that's proper old school VTEC or 911 GT3 levels of revs in an engine that's I don't know, one and a half to two times the size of some of those. It is bonkers and it is glorious and it is absolutely fabulous. I think, because although electrification is coming throughout the car industry, there's no getting away from it, and you've seen it in other Ferraris, Ferrari think there's probably one more generation of this engine before it has to start thinking about exactly what to do next. So there may be one more iteration where it can make a few more revs before they have to think, okay, what do we do beyond beyond this? But in normal driving, because as I said, we're on the road in the UK. What's it like? Well, that's 2000 revs in fifth gear from like 40 miles an hour, and it's really easy, really flexible. It's just, it's just nice. It's just smooth. It's just really nice. Yes, it's got 800 horsepower, but look, you don't have to use it all, do you? In terms of mooching around, this engine is really very, very flexible indeed. You very rarely get anywhere near the upper echelons of the throttle pedal. I mean, coming out of the odd second gear roundabout on a dual carriageway, you can give it the lot for maybe a second. But the good thing is, is that it feels really smooth, really responsive, and it makes a really nice noise all the time. And it does get better when you put that little window down. It's really nice. And Ferrari's twin clutch gearbox is superb and the calibration is brilliant. They do these gearboxes unbelievably well. Better, I think, than anybody else who makes a car like this. I think the twin clutches in Ferraris are better than the ones in McLaren's, although McLaren doesn't make a car quite like this, obviously. But the mid-engine F8 versus 765 or whatever today's McLaren is or this car with the twin clutch against say an Aston Martin DBS which gets a conventional auto this is just as smooth as anything else but more responsive than anything else and of course you could buy a Lamborghini Aventador but it gets that old single clutch clunker which is you know they will tell you is still there because it's characterful which is a way of saying it's not as good as this and also you should note that in adding the roof to this, the interior space has not decreased at all. This is just the same Ferrari cabin as the Superfast in terms of uh, driver and occupant space. If you get an open-topped Lamborghini, that isn't the case. This, it, gets, it gets more cramped, you can't be a tall driver in them. And all of those things put together, coupled with the fact that the extra 75 kilos, although Ferrari says that it's tuned the dampers to try and give this car the same sort of dynamic feel as the coupe, to me, it's been a while since I drove a super fast, but to me, this feels, if anything, a little bit more rounded and a little bit gentler and just a little bit more breathy and a wee bit softer down bumpy roads. Now, it's still very agile. The steering is light, less than two turns locked a lot. I would prefer it if it was a little bit heavier, a little bit slower, so that it wasn't quite so nervous all the time. But in an 812 super fast, sometimes this car can feel a little bit too angry too often as a road car in the UK, because it's a big car. I can't see the end of the bonnet. It's really wide. It's so powerful. However, the 812, the GTS, sorry, in knocking some of that aggression and the suspension back, it feels to me like it's lost a little bit of the Super in the Super GT and added a bit more of the GT and I rather like that. I like it very much. If you have liked this video, tell you what I'd really like is if you would actually give it an up thumb or maybe even subscribe 
So we're here quite often. We're at autocar.co.uk all the time and in all good news agents every Wednesday. Thanks very much. See you next time.